in this episode, we're bringing this chicken back to life. Let's get started. I actually bought this um, several years ago. I don't remember exactly how long ago now. Unless, I mean, it feels like it was 10 years ago, but maybe it wasn't quite that long ago. Um, anyway, it did work at the time, and uh, it was actually a present for my sister who used to have one uh, when she was small and sh her kids were quite little and I uh, figured she might enjoy seeing them play with it um, so I did give it to her as a gift um, and they did use it for a short while but not long after they got it it started to malfunction and I think that um, most likely what you know what was going on was uh, the electronics inside uh, capacitors and things like that had just started to fail so um, the goal here today is going to be, I mean, actually I already took it apart, so, I, um, and I'm sorry, I don't have a better camera set up right now. I thought about for a long time getting a proper mount or something where I could just position this up overhead and, um, I could actually mount it up here about like this where I can work on it and you can see what I'm doing. Um, so that's going to be my goal is to, to, to work on that going forward so that you can get a better perspective on these projects. But anyway, for now I'm just going to try to hold it. It's just my cell phone camera. Um, I did take this apart so I can. Uh, so you can see the chicken in there floating around. Chicken's a little bit unhappy. Um, but that's because, like I said, I'd already taken it apart and some of the mechanicals are out of it already. Um, so you can tell this is a typical 80s device. Um, a lot of them would have these kind of motors and things in them with. A lot of loose wiring and, and stuff like that at the time. It just was not all that uncommon. These days, when you take something apart, you know, you see a lot of um, just really nice ribbon cables and fine wiring, unless it's just Chinese junk. Uh, then you see this still. But um, back then, this was not really that uncommon, even on fairly high end electronics, uh, to take it apart and just see a rat's nest of wiring inside of a remote control car or, or any other child's toy at the time. Um, so I did, uh, you know, I've looked over this a little bit. I don't really know how to test capacitors to see whether they're really any good or not, but my thoughts are the way it's malfunctioning, uh, possibly some solder joints are bad. It's not impossible. I just looking at that board though, you know, if you really look at it, um, there's, there's a, there's a spot there that could possibly be, you know, touched up a little bit, reheated, reflowed. Um, we got a little bit of funk uh, going on over here you know these could be bad but you know I'm, I'm gonna resolder all those but it's also possible that just given the sheer age that these old capacitors here are just they're just failing so um, we're gonna try to find out or I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna work on both those aspects the first and fastest thing to do is going to be to just reflow a lot of this uh, soldering stuff here and hey if it stop, starts working then that's great um if it doesn't i'm going to get into the the uh, capacitors which i'll actually have to order some of those and uh, complete the video at a later time if i have to go to that that level but um for the desoldering uh, i have this station here which i bought few years ago uh, only a few years ago now when Radio Shack was closing I got it for 40 bucks actually on their uh, website they now sell it for like a hundred dollars yeah if you don't know what Radio Shack is still in business in name uh, only but uh, there is a website Radio Shack they still do sell this piece of equipment and it is about a hundred dollars I think at the time they sold new in the store for about 70 and when they were closing I got it for 40 I'd always wanted a decent soldering iron and all I ever had was a little cheap you know ten dollar three to ten dollar uh, little things that take forever to heat up and they don't work that well anyway this thing uh, you know i've never used a really high-end professional um soldering iron but this thing has been amazing uh for the few projects i've used it on just to, to flip it on have three presets to heat it up to what you want and just get in there and just solder things and be done with it has been absolutely amazing um but anyway uh Without much further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that out, get it heated up, and try to reflow these uh, these solder joints here that are quite old, and we'll we'll see how that works out. 
So, uh, I wanted to also mention that when I took this apart, actually a long time ago, it's probably been uh, at least four years since I took this thing apart. Um, I did keep all the extra parts. Hopefully they're all still there. Uh, they're right there. So we've got a bunch of screws and this big gear and uh, gear mechanism or cam and uh, some other little things. I don't even remember how all this goes together, but I'm sure we can figure it out. Uh, for doing the soldering reflow, I've got this, which uh, apparently uh, my kids thought will be a <laughs> good idea for me to have. Uh, I often have commented that Lewis Rossman always uses flux on, like tons of flux on everything he's resoldering, and you know, for all these years, I, you know, just goes to show you how little and what an amateur I am, but all these years I couldn't understand why you just can't reheat solder. Uh, it just, it gets all dried out and stretches and stuff, and when I watched him use flux, and I was like, okay, that's how that works. You put flux on it, and that's what allows the solder to flow. I never really understood that before. Uh, so, now I do, and I know that if I want to reflow solder, put some flux on there. It helps a lot, so I'll be using this. Uh, and this actually came from his website. Uh, I think it's store.rosmangroup.com. I've got it programmed in my head from watching so many of his repair videos. So, yeah, this is going to come in handy. I had to take this screw out off camera because it was actually a little bit stripped out. Um, so, and I'm doing this one-handed again because I don't have a proper camera mount. Alright, so here's our little cluster of boards. And if you're wondering about all this tape, yes, that is original. Um, it's like scotch tape, it, you know. Now you see a lot of things right now these days that are hot glued. Well, this, <laughs> there's no hot glue. Scotch tape. <laughs> that was the flavor of the day for building these components back then. Okay, what do we see here? Well, um, if I can get this to focus, here we see these little things here. Don't know what they are. Maybe someone can explain to me what they are in the comments. Um, a little bit of corrosion there. You know, I see a little corrosion on a, a lot of these pieces here. I don't see any massive corrosion on this side. Um, if there's any corrosion to be concerned about, it's mostly on the other side. Um, so just to explain a little bit about what it was doing, it was, um, this thing is programmed to um, to play tic-tac-toe with you. So I guess I should have laid that out you know, at the beginning of the video. It's, you know, the board there, actually it can play another game. It's like a Simon, basically, type thing where you can, um, you know, follow the, the lights that it lights up. So each one of these LEDs corresponds with a number up here. And what would happen is, uh, you can either play this as tic-tac-toe, or to play a game of Simon where, you know, you just repeat the pattern, and that's selected by the, uh, well, there's, I don't remember what selects it now. There was, like, a mode type thing where you could select which, which mode you played it in. I, I don't remember where that is, I'll have to look at that later. But anyway, so, you know, you have your off on, the chicken, if you're playing tic-tac-toe, that LED lights up right down there um, and uh, when the chickens playing that lights up and whenever you're supposed to play it lights up the other one and a little chicken actually you know box and box and box and then moves its you know, body around and pecks it a number you know when it finally makes a decision and picks uh, you know picks a, a play basically but uh, anyway so that's what the game is about these little LEDs light up the numbers that are being played or in the case of Simon, it's the uh, numbers that you need to press. Now look at this awesome job of connecting all this stuff. It's just like old 
packing tape, you know, I'm afraid to even pull it off because it might pull any wiring that's going through here out. Now it's not impossible that some of those could be bad as well, but look at that. Jeez, look at that actually, there's like a bug in there, some kind of, what is it, like a baby roach or something? Wow, yeah, it kind of looks like it. Well, either way, I don't think he's the problem. He'll need to come out, but uh, who knows how long he's been stuck in there. Anyway, so back to the plane here. Look, made in Taiwan. Back before literally everything was made in China. Um, like I said, I still see some concern here. It just doesn't look great. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get the flux and, and reflow a lot of this solder on here. And, uh, you know, who knows? Especially this up here. That's really concerning. Because uh, those blue wires, where do they go to? They go to the speaker. Yeah. Um, who knows? I mean, it could be a situation where that, you know, that, that thing's bad. And who knows if it's uh, some kind of issue with current draw. I'm sure on this thing between the motor and the speaker, those are the two highest draw um, items. If it's bad connection, it pulls voltage down, causes the chicken to go wacko or the logic. So, could be just about anything, but on these old electronics like this, it, it's kind of just a good idea to just reflow the solder on it anyway, because <laughs> you'd be amazed if it's in generally good condition. Otherwise, how many times that alone will fix whatever kind of weird uh, problems you're having with these old toys. So, let me get to work on that. Okay, I'm going to try to capture... Uh, doing one of these it's really difficult because I'm holding this with one hand but uh, so that you can see how this particular soldering iron works especially with the uh, the flux how I reflow this solder here you just touch it on there see that it just cleans it up uh, it's good to this one here I think I actually did this one already yeah I did okay and then we go to, go to this one here See that? You can just tell it gets a really nice shiny look to it. Um, it's kind of your indicator that it's been reflowed. Otherwise, it kind of has a tarnished yellowish uh, look. See that? Nice shiny. All right, I'm going to go ahead and complete the rest of these. Okay, as I was going through this, um, I just completed reflowing all the uh, solder points on the backside of. Uh, that piece there and then I've said well let me let me scope this out again a little bit um, look real close at all this because you know these were kind of dubious to begin with even from the factory um, in fact one of the soldering joints was like this on the back side of that thing uh, and but it was like barely even on there you could tell it was always like that so not the best quality um, but I got in here and I noticed this look at that and it's quite possible that, that most definitely is related to our intermittent kind of weird failure um, that on the other side here if you zoom out is this transistor now I don't know what that does in the circuit um, but uh, that being in that kind of state is very suspicious uh, so I wanted to point that out I'm gonna try to uh, secure that a little bit better and uh, you know reflow that but um, that's the kind of thing you find on these old boards you know that oftentimes were you know toys that may have been kind of tossed around thrown around thrown in toy boxes just jarred loose and who knows what in fact it may have just failed just from time um, but anyway, so I want to point that out. I'll reflow it, and then we'll take a look at it afterwards. Yeah, so I'm not able to really keep that down as well as I'd like. Um, but I did, you know, take the transistor and push it back a little bit. And I reflowed all three of those to hopefully make sure they're making good contact either way. As long as it doesn't move around a whole lot at this point, it should probably be good. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Time will tell. Uh, I think I'm going to pull that sticker off the back of this piece here with the uh, little visitor inside there and uh, check all those, those solder joints as well. 
Okay, so except for our bizzer that was hanging out in there for probably the past 30 years, um, those solder joints look like some of the best on the entire thing. So I don't know if that's to do with the tape being over all that time and perhaps the properties of the tape and the adhesive um, keeping it that way, but uh, those don't look like they're a problem at all. Okay, so I think we've got everything kind of re-soldered that needs to be. I mean, I didn't bother with these. Um, you know, there wasn't really any problem with it getting power. So uh, those are probably all fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and um, we will uh, see what happens. If it still doesn't work, then uh, these two here, uh, these two things here will probably be uh, the next step. Uh, but like I said, those will be things that I have to order. Um, it also could possibly be something to do with the chip there. Now, notice that this isn't soldered, but there's no trace there, so I don't think there's any problem with that. Um, you know, and then there's this one up here, same thing, so I don't think those are really an issue. All these look pretty well soldered. Um, I don't see any reason to try to reflow those. I mean, it's not impossible. You can have a bad uh, connection there, um, but... Let's see. I don't know about that one there though. I might reflow that one. But other than that, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. We'll just see what happens. I just got the speaker mounted in here and I uh, put these little tabs on here. And I just I wanted to show that as I was putting this together. Um, I really can't wait to get a mount for this thing so that you could see me do that part of it. I just can't do it one handed. But um, I just wanted to point that out. Just, you know, how how crude and rudimentary a lot of this stuff was at the time. I mean, this was, I think, um, uh, somewhere I saw a date on this, but it was either 1980 or 82, but um, just how basic a lot of these toys were. Um, and yet, you know, as kids at the time, I mean, I remember my sister playing with this. Um, I certainly played with it uh, also, and uh, we had a lot of fun with it, but just <laughs> such basic, basic toys. I mean, this is stuff that you would maybe find the kind of quality of things that you would find in a, uh, a dollar store these days for maybe 10 bucks or something. But I don't think this was that cheap. I think it was 30 or $40 at the time. And it just kind of highlights how our expectations of the, the quality and the way things are made has changed over time. Okay, I just got the motor mounted. Um, that pretty much consists of just uh, screwing this down on top of the motor itself. Um, I noticed uh, there was a natural curve in this wire here that went just like that. So I said, well, for some reason, probably just to keep it controlled and out of the way, they must have routed it through there. I just, you know, like I said, I took this apart years ago, so I don't remember exactly. I'm having to kind of just look at it and figure out how it went back together. But it's a pretty simple mechanism, so I don't think it's really that difficult. Um, okay, on to the gears. I get to figure out how those went in there. Um, so obviously some how to do with this, but well, let's get those in Okay, well that wasn't too difficult uh, Basically the little one sits there facing up this one here goes this way and uh, This probably needs some grease if this ends up working. I'm gonna put some white lithium grease in there I don't have any handy here um, I think I have some somewhere, but I'm not sure where it is right now. But anyway for the time being um, You know, that's how those gears go in there and now we get to figure out the I don't know what this was for. It's something to do with the actual chicken itself. I don't know, but uh, anyway, obviously there's a cam on there. That probably moved the chicken back and forth or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, well, figured out what, what this is for. It goes on here. And uh, that is used to retain the bottom, that spindle right there is used to retain uh, the chicken in place as he's being uh, actuated uh, by the cam. So when the cam sits here somewhere, I think probably on top of this spindle, yeah, in fact, there's that little uh, square thing there locks it in place. And as this goes around, um, this sits in there and it, it follows that cam. So it's going up and down and stuff. And that's, as it's doing that, it's causing the little chicken to 
to bounce up and down and move back and forth and stuff. So that's how all that works. It's interesting to see how they would work out these little things. It's probably, it's simple in one way, and yet at the same time, it's probably overly complicated. I could have probably could have done it a lot simpler. Um, I don't know how, but I'm sure that today, if someone wants to manufacture something like this, it would be an even simpler mechanism than that. But anyway, okay, so let's get this cam together and see if I can get those boards mounted. Okay, so I've gotten uh, all of uh, the screws into this board here. That seems to be mounted pretty well. And I just remembered this when I was putting this board in here. I started looking for, you know, where is this screwed down at? And then I remembered that uh, it's not. Um, I had completely forgotten that whenever I took it apart, I was really surprised that the part that actually you press on that would take the most pressure um, doesn't get screwed down. It just sits against these little places here. Um, and that's what these are for. They line up with that. And uh, that is that is the support for the, for the keypad there. So... Um, I think that's pretty much just about it. Um, I say that, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six. No, that's right. There's six screws on the bottom. So um, I was going to say, I thought I had an extra screw there. I'm like, I don't really know where it will go because everything is mounted now. So, but anyway, I don't. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this like this for now. I'm going to go grab some C batteries, I believe. Um, maybe D's. I need to check that. What, what is actually in there? I think those are actually D's. Yeah, those are D's. I don't know if I even have any D batteries right now. Oh, 1980. That's where I saw a second, uh, 20, second of May 1980. Wow, geez. Um, oh, thanks for popping back off there. Here. Um, no. Oh, they all came out. Geez. What happened to the little gear? Oh, it's in here. Okay. Alrighty then. That was something. I guess you're getting to see how I put this together, and I'm actually holding the camera while I'm doing it. So, I'm getting, getting good here. Alright. Um, I'm going to go see if I can find some D batteries, because I can't even test this without D batteries. Uh, and then I will come back and we'll test it out. Okay. I'm back. And... I have this. Uh, geez, that was bright. Um, I believe this has what we need inside of it. Because I was looking at that and I don't think they're actually uh, D batteries. I think they're C batteries. So, I know there's some C's in here. Let's see if we can actually get these out and use them. Now, interestingly enough, this little Fisher Price tape recorder. Um, it has a small issue, nothing terrible, but uh, there's a little bit of flutter in its playback, so I'm imagining that the belt is probably worn on this, so that might be an upcoming project if uh, anyone is interested in that. I mean, just uh, leave a comment or something. Jeez, this thing just doesn't want to go in there. Okay, there we go. All right that out of the way and some batteries inside this thing here and see what happens see if we can bring the chicken back to life can we bring now I do know actually that um, that's a little weak right there um, it needs to be bent out that's a kind of problem with these old tab connector things. Just, what? Uh oh. Here it's <laughs> that sounds good. Well, it sounds like I also left a switch on. Now, this originally had some kind of a little pad inside of it. Let me fold up this uh, towel and put it in there to keep those batteries tight. Okay, I'm just going to lay this on top of there. That should help keep those tight for now. It does need a proper. Uh, wait, how's this go? Uh, yeah, like that. Uh, well, that might be overkill. Let's see. Okay, that's too big. Hold on, let me trim it down. 
All right, maybe we'll just try that. I, no matter what I did, this thing seemed to be too tight. Even now, it feels a little bit too tight. All right, that's it. Let's see what happens here. See if the chicken will play tic-tac-toe with us. Okay. So, um, that's right. Okay, to switch between the two different modes, you just pressed one or two. And one was the tic-tac-toe mode. And I don't know if you can really see those LEDs. They're, of course, they look like they're flickering, but they're not really. That's only on the camera. Um, but this is, uh, we want to play tic-tac-toe. Okay, let's see. Oh, there he goes. Ah, he's pecking around. Or she, technically, I guess. Okay. Go ahead and make a move, chicken. Okay, the chicken has chosen seven. Now, interestingly enough, I don't remember what the pattern was, but I have a very old video on YouTube of where I discovered that there was a specific pattern where you would always beat this chicken. But I don't remember what it is, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play. Let's say okay. I don't know what my strategy is here. I don't never claim to be a great tic tac toe player. Okay. Chicken has chosen to go there. I'm sure this chicken's gonna beat me. Okay. Yeah. Chicken's gonna go on six, otherwise I would win. See, the chicken's smart. Believe it or not, even in nineteen eighty a chicken could be quite smart, okay? I don't know that chickens have progressed much since beyond then. Um, I don't really know. I don't think I can win at this point. I think no matter what I choose, it's gonna, because if I go nine, it's probably gonna pick three or something. I don't know, let's just pick, let's just pick nine, because no matter what, it's gonna win. Oh, okay. Where, okay, it did pick three, exactly like what I thought. Okay, well, obviously, I'm not going to let you win with that one chicken, but you'll probably win some other way that I don't really see right now. Okay. Chicken, what are you doing? Oh, okay. Chicken is saying nobody won. That's what chicken's saying. So, I defeated you, chicken, not only electronically, but in actual gameplay. I think that's going to be a wrap for this episode of uh, Hack 1985. I think that was a success because before the chicken would not play. The chicken just had weird flashing lights all over the place and would uh, occasionally just cluck and wig out. I mean, basically made no sense. So um, I think we have an operational chicken here again. I'm really excited about this. This has taken me, golly, I mean, years and <laughs> years to get around to this project. So... I'm pretty excited about this. I'll probably get it all boxed back up again and send it back out to my sister if she wants it still. I mean, <laughs> her kids are basically grown now, or at least they're much older, so we'll see. Um, if you guys like this, uh, then subscribe and uh, like the video. And if you'd like to see more of these types of things, please let me know if you're not, if you don't wanna see these kinds of things, well, too bad, because this is probably what I'm going to make anyway. But I'll put more effort into it if you do enjoy, uh, like, you know, if you enjoy these types of things. So, um, there could be many more to come. I mean, I've got this thing sitting over here. Uh, I don't know. That may never work, to be honest with you. I'll have to find a different controller to even try to make that work. But it needs a lot of help. Um, and that has got some problems with the volume. I mean, I've got I've got things like this all around me every day. So it's just a matter of uh, whether I do it, you know, when I eventually get around to it, or if you guys are interested, then I'll actually probably move on it quicker, just because it's kind of cool to to see people respond to uh, these different projects. So anyway, have a great day. Until then, keep hacking like it's 1985. Yeah.